Before we get to the clip, please note all of our programs now archived for you for free. That includes Wretched Radio. So if you want more Wretched, and frankly, who doesn't, simply visit wretched.org. Let's get to our clip. You remember Aristides, don't you? Caesar Hadrian. Um, became Caesar of Rome, I believe, in around 117. Um, and, and he was a religious man, not a Christian, a religious man. In fact, he built the Temple of Venus. So, so here, religious man, and, and, and he was so weirded out by this small but very rapidly growing cult called the Way, we call it Christianity, that he sent a a man to get to the bottom of what made us as the people of God distinct. So you've got a Caesar of Rome who built a temple to Venus who starts to get anxious about Christianity's growing global influence, so he sends a spy in to check us out. His name was, uh, I'm going to just try this, just try to trust me. Um, Aristides, I think. And in a letter back to Caesar, here's what he wrote. They love one another, and he who has gives to him who has not without boasting. And when they see a stranger, they take him into their homes and rejoice over him as a very brother. And if there is among them any that are poor and needy, and if they have no spare food, they fast two or three days in order to supply to the needy their lack of food. Listen to this. Such, O king, is their manner of life, and verily this is a new people, and there is something divine in the midst of them. That isn't a fairy tale. That happened. The people of God marked by generosity, motivated by the grace and mercy of God, with the metric being a heart that is cheerful in the Lord, with the method of empowering churches to do the work of raising up individuals for ministry while sacrificially giving, secretly giving, all the while with a cheerful disposition, rejoicing in the moving of the gospel to the ends of the earth. Not to be critical, but these pastors who preach with their arms flailing. May I ask you a question? What might Aristides say if he was sent to spy on your church. That is precisely what Eric Geiger asked because he studied this report in more detail. You see, there was more uh, to the report than what Matt Chandler just shared. So let us take a look at this man's observance of the early church and ask, how does my church compare? Not your neighbor's church, not my church, your church. Uh, This is a summary from Eric Geiger. Uh, Number one, their trust in Christ impacts how they live. In other words, early Christians acted like, oh yeah, Christians. You see, James made it clear, a faith that does not produce works is no faith at all. That type of faith is dead. Any genuine salvific faith will, as a natural consequence, bear fruit. In other words, we're going to act differently, think differently, speak differently. That's precisely what Aristides observed. Here's what he wrote. They know and trust in God. From him they receive those commandments which they have engraved on their minds and which they observe in the hope and expectation of the world to come. For this reason, they do not commit adultery or immorality. They do not bear false witness or embezzle, nor do they covet what is not theirs. So in other words, these early Christians behaved so obviously like law keepers, a pagan 
whether he intended to or not, was actually saying they keep the commandments. Consider that for a moment. He didn't just observe these are nice people, they greeted me, they made sure there was a parking space open for my chariot. No, he noticed their morality to the point where he started to list the commandments. They don't commit adultery or any acts of immorality. They don't embezzle. They don't lie. That is the observation of a man from 2000, give or take, years ago. What would he say if he observed you and your church members? Number two from Eric Geiger, their unity transcends what they have in common. Our key word today is unity. Got it? Does your church have unity? Did you know that 12 of the New Testament epistles include the word peace in their greeting? Grace, mercy, power, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, or a variation on that theme. The word peace is offered as a greeting and as an encouragement because that is what the church should be. How can a church be a palace beautiful? As Pilgrim ex observed in his progress towards celestial city, how is it that church can be the place that you enter and go, ah, church should not be the place where you walk in and go, all right, who's around? All right, what do, we, what do I got to deal with today? No, 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 no. That's what work is for. Instead, church should be the, ah, oh, it feels good to be here with God's people. Why? Because there is peace. How does a body of believers get that peace? It comes through unity. It does not come from pretending that disagreements don't exist or just sweeping truth under the rug. Well, let's just forget about those things so that we just have unity. That's not unity. Never is there unity without truth. Therefore, if you are striving uh, to know the truth of the Bible, there should be unity in the body and there should be shalom. Does your church have that? Here's what Aristides observed. As for their bondmen and bondwomen and their children, if there are any, they persuade them to become Christians. That's interesting. And when they have done so, they call them brethren without distinction. In other words, they don't act, at least in this observation, like the Corinthian church. What was plaguing that particular body? It, it, it was a case of you're in that clique, I'm in this clique, my clique is better than your clique. It's sectarianism. It is the idea that I belong to MacArthur, you belong to Sproul, and my group is better than nah, nah, nah. not in the early church that Aristides observed. There should be no distinction between classes, genders, ethnic groups. Why? Because the cross has removed all of it. And so people were seen as equally valued in the eyes of God with different gifts and different responsibilities, but all equal at the foot of the cross. And because of that understanding, there was peace and there was unity. Got that at your church? Thank you for watching our daily snippet. This was just a short clip. You know we do a daily TV broadcast. It's 30 minutes long and you now have access to it for free thanks to the ongoing monthly support of our gospel partners. Watch as many shows as you can stomach at wretched.org. And don't forget, you can listen to thousands of hours of Wretched Radio at wretched.org also. All thanks to the ongoing monthly support of our gospel partners. Hey, I just had this wacky idea. Would you like to become one of those? We'd be grateful. If you have benefited from any of the work that we've done here, we sure would appreciate your support. Visit wretched.org.